special counsel Jack Smith has indicted Donald Trump in the second federal indictment and here to help us break it down and understand what is going on with our democracy and folks like Donald Trump running for president while they are being accused of trying to subvert democracy. Uh, Dr. Raphael Sonnenshine, executive director of the John Randolph Haynes and Dora Haynes Foundation is back with us. And Dr. Omi Congo Dabinga, professional lecturer at American University and author of the new book, Lies About Black People. Thank you so much, uh, Rafe and Dr. Dabinga. Uh, when we started preparing this morning for this show, we had no idea that the indictment would come down, this 45-page 40 page indictment uh, secured by special counsel Jack Smith, which accuses Donald Trump of a conspiracy against the right to vote and to have one's vote counted in violation of this federal statute, uh, Section 241. This alleged offense under... Section 241 is among four counts included in the indictment, which argues that Trump, with six unnamed co-conspirators, eroded trust in the administration of the election and pursued unlawful means of discounting legitimate votes and subverting the election results. Rafe, you have been studying, teaching <laughs> politics, living through uh, administrations, you know, you have some wisdom. Help us understand how significant today is. First of all, my wisdom doesn't work quite as well with Donald Trump, who's <laughs> the most completely different political character in the history of the country. I think that what this does is it basically guarantees his nomination uh, for the uh, to be the Republican candidate, which, as I've said on this program every time, it's going to be Biden against Trump. It's going to be Trump against Biden. There's everybody else is just wandering in the wilderness. There is nothing to do in the primary election anymore except talk about his casting this as his heroic battle to vindicate himself, which also means fighting the indictment is his campaign. And that's what we forget when we see that the PAC money is flowing in to pay his legal fees. He doesn't need a campaign. This is his campaign. The only way to stop this unfair indictment is to elect me so I can shut the whole thing down. Now, whether that is going to destroy the Republican Party, which is running out of money everywhere because he's vacuuming up all the money on this crusade, is another thing. But it had nothing to do with his chances of being the nominee. They get stronger literally by the day. I have to wonder, though, uh, Dr. Dominga, somebody in the Republican Party has some sense. Let's be clear. They're not all idiots. And you're right, Rafe, the money is being churned through so quickly. Literally, you, you have a PAC saying, give us back $60 million, Donald Trump, that we loan to you because we are running through this cash so quickly because it's not just Donald Trump legal fees. He's also paying the legal fees of these individuals who are being indicted with him, like the two workers down in Florida. There are six unnamed co-conspirators in this new indictment, and we know the investigation continues, so we're likely to see others, like we are seeing others being indicted in Florida. And Trump is paying the legal fees because he's trying to keep everybody on the same page, telling the same lie and the same story uh, so that he's not exposed. Uh, Dr. DeBiga, come on. Some of these tech giants that are writing these million dollar checks, these guys are rich for a reason. Do you see any of them start to say, wait a minute, wait, 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 this, this is a bridge too far. I mean, he, here's hoping. And I mean, we, we've said that after so many things that he has done. I mean, obviously, this is the biggest thing. But even when he was running and he was, and the video came out about, you know, grabbing women where he said he could grab them. You know, there's just been one thing after another, something sexist, something racist, something homophobic. And it's just gone, you know, two impeachments. I mean, the list has gone up and up and up. And I think that the fact that he continues to stay at number one as it relates to the Republican primary is actually going to lead some of these companies to actually stay with him more unless we become more vocal in calling them out. So if there are companies out there that who are giving him money and we actually go on a public campaign and say, you know, why are you supporting this person who's federally indicted? That's when some changes will happen. But these big companies, they play off of our ignorance. They think that nobody's watching them. And you have some of these companies that actively give to Democrats and Republicans because they're like, hey, we want to be in door and you know work of anybody who gets into power. And we have to let them know that this is 
different now. This that that may have worked in the past, but we can't have politics as usual anymore. And I actually believe that this is actually going to put at least temporarily, it's going to put Trump ahead of Biden in these polls temporarily because every group just needs something to fire them up, and this is going to fire up the Trump base like nothing we've ever seen. And I don't know if Biden's going to get anything on this type of level to counter that between now and 2024. Hopefully he will. But but that's what I don't understand about these polls. I understand the MAGA base that is fueling Trump's number one position with the Republican Party rape. But if this poll is a cross section of U.S. voters, it would have to include independents. It would have to include progressives. So are those independents also saying this is the weaponization of the FBI and the Department of Justice and we need Donald Trump in there so he can pardon himself and pardon all of these insurrectionists? Do you think that's the mindset of, of independents? No, but you know, there were, remember the red wave that was going to happen in November of 2022? In 2021, it looked like a red wave. And that's because Democrats, you have to like remind Democrats it's actually an election and uh, independence, and they're just nearly not ready. And then at the very end, they just go crazy and show up to vote. This is an odd poll. I think Trump may be at his high point in this poll, actually, because about 37% of the electorate says whatever he does is 100% fine with me. There's nothing right. he can do wrong. He's a little bit above that. Meanwhile, Joe Biden is slightly outrunning his approval rating which is about 39% in this poll, and he's at 43. He has a lot of room to grow. There's all this nonsense about third-party candidates floating around, you know, and Democrats like to flirt. So, you know, so Democrats are flirting with everybody who walks down the street uh, that they might vote for them. In addition, the economic news is on the verge of catching up, and there's one indicator, the rate of inflation is going down. And that has what has been killing Biden since he's president, no matter what he accomplishes. That's why they're starting to talk about the economy for the first time, because inflation's going down. And he has room to grow. There's a lot of groups who are going to come around to him who aren't there yet, but it'll still be close. This is a big wake-up call for everybody. This is not a runaway. Yeah, no, it, it definitely not a runaway. And there, like you said, I, I saw also a poll that said that in the Republican, and these polls are very confusing. The math doesn't make sense yeah, doesn't because one of the polls I saw said that, as you just said, rape, that Trump was at his peak and only at, at that peak, he only had 37% of the Republican party. So they were saying the problem is you got all these other folks with five and one and 13%. So there's no other candidate that's been able to consolidate that other I don't know, do the math, 63% of the Republican Party, but there are Republicans out there saying Trump is not at 50% of the Republican Party. He just has a solid 37 and no one else has 37, which suggests that there is room not only for Biden to grow, but for some other Republican candidate, if they can consolidate <laughs> uh, that 63% if you were to take these numbers seriously, which at some point you just say, all oh, these polls are ridiculous and don't waste your time reading them because who are they calling? And this poll, the, the New York Times poll acknowledged that some people said they wouldn't even, you know, they wouldn't even state who they were voting for. Mm -hmm. And there was, I think, 14% of people who, you know, weren't decided. <clears throat> so it's it's an early poll. It's probably not very accurate, as you've said. Uh, and then you juxtapose that with this Republican anti-Trump movement that is saying, look, this guy can be beat. Don't let the loud 37% make you think that that's, you know, 51% because it's not. But I think we're going to start to see something very interesting. There are too many other people whose lives and their freedom are at jeopardy. And I do not see all of these people hanging with Trump and continuing to toe the party line. I think you're going to start to see people peel off. You're going to start to see people try to save themselves and provide whatever testimony to the special counsel that can allow them to be immune, not just from prosecution, but can save them from going to jail. So uh, I think we uh, better not count out the fact that Trump could be facing some of the worst times he has ever faced with these new indictments.